we are heading south. We are going to a Volkswagen Group factory. So that was part two. If you haven't watched part two or part one yet, be sure to check out the links in the description or click on the banner in the top right hand corner. In this episode, part three, we head to the local town to meet the townspeople, the mayor, and drop off our last round of donations to some local schools. We get to see how they're preparing the kids and the school itself for the school year. Everything from retrofitting bomb shelters to sandbags to cover the windows to make sure the kids are as safe as possible if in case there ever is an attack. We arrived at the first school and quickly unloaded all the supplies and donations that we had left. These donations were being unloaded into the school's gymnasium where the community was collecting supplies for themselves as well as supplies to give to people who have been displaced by the war or even those fighting on the front lines. Over 400 kids attend this school and this is just one of many in the area. We got to see some of the more recently renovated classrooms which had new desks, furniture, and other tools. And the biggest thing that the school needs is sandbags because every window on the first and second floor needs them to protect from any potential blast that might hit the school or nearby. So then they took us into their bomb shelter, which they were currently in the middle of renovating. The government was requiring every single school in the country to have a safe shelter like this bomb shelter to house the kids in case of an attack. You can feel the humidity down here. It really does feel Soviet era, the massive reinforcement in the middle. And yeah, to have this ready in what, seven weeks? They can't open the school without this being finished and approved. Honestly, if you look at the laborers, the guys who are working on it, and the guy's like 70 years old. So I guess all the young guys are all doing other things right now. It's after touring the first school, we were told we were going to go to the town center and meet the mayor. This originally was not the plan, and so we were a bit shocked when we were told that. When we arrived, the mayor was actually currently in the middle of hosting a town hall meeting, and he actually stepped out quickly to say hello and to say thank you to Jamie for all the supplies and donations he was able to give to the town and the schools. Any help, any help for us is the great, of great importance and every little help matters right now in the, in the current time. Not to sound like a diplomat, but <laughs> in America we see on the news every day with Ukraine and we really, America thinks Ukraine is so strong and so inspirational. <laughs> So if not for uh, American help and help for the American, from the American nation, the American government, especially when the Biden right now is providing strong and uh, like strong position regarding the military situation in Ukraine and providing weapons, we uh, would not be able to withstand and uh, like it's great to have the assistance of the US. Thank so, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. so after meeting the mayor, we headed to the second school. When we arrived at the second school, there were dirt mounds and anti-tank placements scattered around the block, as well as a checkpoint just down the street from the school. Over a thousand kids go to this school, and we learned that just a few months before, right around when the invasion was starting, that over 4,000 soldiers from the Ukrainian army were being housed here. And once the soldiers had left, the school quickly transitioned into getting the school ready for the school year and the kids coming in the fall. They continued to show us around the school, showing us the basement and some of the other places in the building that were still in need of renovation, as again, most of this is Soviet era, and with the war looming over their heads, they have to quickly get all this stuff ready and prepared just in case there ever is an attack here. Unfortunately, our time in Ukraine was starting to come to an end as we had to cross the border and drive eight or nine hours to our next destination. Now left Ukraine, um, four and a half hours from border crossing, which is absolutely insane. I mean, going in we expected maybe four hours, coming out with no traffic, re-entering, kind of the EU-ish. Should not have been like that. They just seem lazy and whatever. Fuel and hunger 
Hungary is 80% more expensive for foreigners than Hungarians because Hungary. Um, and now we are driving 600 miles to drop off Ryan, and that's basically going to end the, this trip. It's part of the trip. So it's been wild. We've got a lot to think about, a lot to decompress between the basement, the bomb shelter, and the schools, the school bus, and just things we can do to help. And then I think we've made a bunch of new friends especially the guys up in Lviv, um, you know, they were amazing. The Volkswagen were incredible, I mean, getting to, to go down the production line, etc. was super cool, but um, yeah. Um, so we should probably end this pretty soon. Yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, big thanks to SCP Euro for making this possible. And wash your hands, wash your cars, and take care. is getting ready to be shipped overseas to help students in Ukraine. It's all thanks to several community members in the Pottstown area. The big yellow school bus, it's destined for a school district in Ukraine, but its journey there would never have been scheduled without the inspiration of professional car builder Jamie Orr. Many schools in Ukraine are closing because they don't have bomb shelters and buses are needed to take students to other buildings. This is going to help them have the most normal year that they could possibly have. And Orr says the students will We'll be getting more than just a new ride to school. We'll go on a great big ship to Germany and then be transported down to Ukraine. We're en route. We hope to fill it with more supplies.